27th April 1993, a DHC 5 Buffalo Transport aircraft of the Zambian Air Force crashed into the Atlantic Ocean shortly after taking off from Libreville, Gabon. The flight carried most of the Zambian national team to a 1994 FIFA World Cup qualifier against Senegal in Dakar. As we know, there are so many myths around the Gabon disasters. So much so, it's hard to tell what the truth is. At the 1988 Olympic Games in Sao, the Chipolopolo thrashed Italy 4-0, including a hat-trick from Kalusha Wadia. Who won Footballer of the Year later that year? The Chipolopolo had their eyes on the 1994 Africa Cup of Nations trophy, having finished third in the 1990 auditions and hoped for a place at their first World Cup. As such, the Chipolopolo had to beat Senegal to qualify to the World Cup. To do so, they had to travel to Dakar using the DHC-5 Buffalo, which entered service in 1975. The plane had been out of service for five months from late 1992 to 21st April 1993. Test flights were carried out on 22nd and 26th April prior to the departure for Dakar. Flight tests were carried out on the 22nd and the 26th April prior to the departure for Dakar. Checks revealed a number of defects in the engine. These included carbon particles in the oil filters, disconnected cables, and a trace of heating. However, the flight went on as scheduled. The flight had been specifically arranged by the Zambia Air Force for the football team. The journey was scheduled to make three stops for refueling, at the first at Brazzaville, Congo, the second at Libreville, Gabon the third Abidjan Avery Coast. At the first stop in Brazzaville, engine problems were noticed. Despite this, the flight continued, and a few minutes after taking off from the second stop in Libreville, the pilot who had also flown the team from a match in Mauritius previously, then mistakenly shut down the right engine, causing the plane to lose all power during the climb out of Libreville Airport, and fell into the water 500 meters offshore. A Gabon report released in 2003 attributed the pilot's actions to a faulty warning light and fatigue. A campaign to have the Gabonese crash investigation publicly released continued into the 2000s. In November 2003, a preliminary crash investigation report was released by the Gabonese government, which claimed that the left engine had caught on fire and in an attempt to control the fire, the pilot thought he had shut down the engine when in reality he shut down the right engine due to the faulty line. Despite this, the relatives of the victims continued to lobby the Zambian government to produce a report on how the aircraft was allowed to leave Zambia and why the players were transported in a military plane. In May 2002, $4 million was given to the families of the deceased players in compensation. All 30 passengers and crew, including 18 players, as well as the national team coach and support staff, died in the accident. The Chipolopolo captain, Kalu Shabwadi, later national team coach and president of the Football Association of Zambia, 
was not aboard the flight as he was in Netherlands playing for PSV at the time and made separate arrangements to make his own way to Senegal to take part in the match. At the time, Charles Msonda played in Belgium and was previously injured and so was not on the flight. Jackson Warrior also escaped the disaster who at the time was playing for FC Bell in Switzerland. Barnett Simfukwe, who had been seconded to the fires by his employers for five years and was supposed to be on the flight but wasn't on it because his employers demanded that he should immediately be removed from the list of those who were officially scheduled to travel to Senegal. All 30 people on board died in the crash. 24 bodies were recovered but only 13 could be identified. The members of the national team killed in the crash were buried in what became known as Heroes Acre, just outside the Independence Stadium in Lusaka. A new side was quickly assembled and led by Kalusha Bwadia, faced with the difficult task of having to complete Zambia's World Cup qualifiers. They narrowly missed qualification by finishing one point behind Morocco. Just after, they had to prepare for the coming Africa Cup of Nations, which was only a few months away, to be hosted in Tunisia. The resurrected team defied all odds and displayed an attacking playstyle, which was amazing throughout the tournament. They reached the 1994 Africa Cup of Nations final against Nigeria. They took the lead in the first half but the Super Eagles quickly collided and followed up with the winning goal in the second half. In spite of the loss, the Zambian side returned home as national heroes. In 2012, Zambia won the Africa Cup of Nations in Libreville, only a few hundred meters inland from the crash site. The victory was dedicated to the ones who lost their lives in the tragedy. Zambia beat Ivory Coast 8-7 in a penalty shootout after the game ended 0-0 after no more and added time play. Many questions have been asked about the crash. Why the engine problem wasn't addressed? Why use a fatigued pilot? Or why fly with the military plane? 